Hi paper crafters, welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. Today I want to share a really cute little project made with the Takeout Thinlets box from Stampin' Up! So uh, you're probably still thinking Christmas, but I want to get into New Year's and I'm going to show you a Christmas variation on this box at the end as well. So we're going to be using these uh, materials today and we are going to start with the takeout thinlets. So these are in the 2018 holiday catalog and they are really cute if you like to give little treat boxes or little uh, welcomes or if you want to make even little um, ornaments for the tree out of them. And they have some really nice plain shapes. So a star and a heart. There's a nice uh, banner here, a little tag. But the star of the show really is this guy right here. So what's so great about the takeout thinlets is that you only need a half a sheet of cardstock. So I've cut mine to five and a half by eight and a half, and we are going to be using the gold. So I'll get to that in just a minute. So I've got gold foil, I've got some sparkly silver glimmer paper, I've got just plain basic black, and I'll get to those in a minute. We're also going to use the uh, glittered organdy ribbon that's also in the holiday catalog because it's got lots of bling for New Year's. And then we're just going to need our bone folder and some tear and tape and some liquid glue as well. So I'm going to place this down and one of the things you want to think about doing is you want to get the best use out of your paper, especially when it's the foil paper paper, or if it were the glimmer, glimmer paper. So I put one this way and then my second one I'm going to put in this way and I'm going to run that through the big shot. So there are my two pieces already cut out. So I'm just put those to the, to the side and then I'm also going to cut out two times the word happy and the word happy comes from from the Merry Christmas Thinlet dies and it's got quite pretty uh, cursive writing and it's got Merry, Holidays, Christmas and Happy and then it has a couple little tags and we're also going to be using this tag a little bit later so I'll just pull it out right now. So I'll put these on here and when I'm using the dies that are detailed like this I want to pull in my precision base plate. And let me just show you the sandwich for that. So what you need is your Big Shot platform. Turn that around so you can see it. And then your thin die adapter. And then this is your precision base plate. And it is a piece of really sturdy metal that will not bend. With these dies, there's a lot of intricate cuts that it needs to make. So your Big Shot platform is going to run it through and not have any kind of give to it. So it really is useful to have. And here we go. I'm going to place that on there so I use the least amount of my paper. And I'm going to run it through twice. Once with my uh, silver glimmer paper and once with my basic black, which is on the bottom. So let me do that. Now that I have these cut out, what I want to do is give them just a little bit more bling or more pizzazz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these through one of our embossing folders. And this is the Oh My Stars embossing folder. I really like it because it's got a funky kind of star. When you're going to add paper in here that has a different color on one side than the other, like our foil paper does, you need to think about which way you're putting it in. So I want my stars to be popping out at me. So in order to do that, what I do is think about what's in here. And this is the depressed side. So this is going into the plastic and this is coming out of the plastic. So I know that I need to put my paper in here face up so that I am going to get raised stars. Now you'll notice that this does not quite fit in there. If I were to put it even, it won't quite fit. This is the top that you're going to see. This here is the bottom you're not going to see. So I'm gonna put it in so that little bit is just peeking over the edge. And I'm not too worried about this because this is uh, still thinner than my Big Shot is and I'm gonna run that through my Big Shot. So there are my pieces. So what I need to do now is I need to fold along all of the score lines that have been put on with the framelit. And I'm gonna fold them all first. And then when they're folded, I'm going to come in again with the bone folder and just crisp up the edges. Okay, there we go. So all of these pieces that you see right here, these are what we're going to put tear and tape on and some liquid glue. So I'm just gonna put tear and tape on those right now. 
just a word of caution about your tear and tape. You want to make sure that it goes up to the edge but not over the edge because you will see it once your box is together. So now that I have it on my tabs, you need to just put it on one of the bottoms. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick. You're going to put tear and tape on there. Get my end count going again. And I usually put uh, three pieces so that we're going to get a pretty good hold. And I am going to put a little bit of liquid glue on here as well. I'm gonna take these all off now. And I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue over top of that tape. And the reason for this in central Alberta or anywhere where you live that might be dry, the tear and tape does seem to lose, oh, whoops, I forgot that guy, does seem to lose some of its stick. So uh, to keep these together, especially if you're making them ahead of time, this is a good idea to put some liquid glue on it as well. And make sure that you only put it on one bottom because I have done that before where I've put it on both bottoms and you don't need to do that. So now we're gonna start putting it together. So this needs to fit into the other piece. So I'm gonna lift that up and I am going to put it on top so that I almost have four petals. You can think of it as four petals. The liquid glue will stick and be slatty, but the tear and tape is gonna make sure it doesn't move. So then I'm just going to start putting all of my corners together and I'm just going to pull it together so that it's got a good hold and I'm just going to go around the box and do the same thing. So I'm giving a nice square edge to the box, which is a pretty easy step to do here. And then the last one, you just need to fit it inside. Get it closed there, fit it inside. And then you'll need to take your hand and just go in there. I'm gonna open it up a little bit now and just sort of firm up those glue points just a little bit. Okay, so you can set it up like that. Now we are going to close our box because we're gonna put something inside and we're going to use it upside down. So I've taken one of our two by eight cello bags and I've taken some of these mini salted caramel turtles and I've made just a little bag of goodies that are going to fit inside. So I'm gonna put those inside and they should just fit perfectly with three in there. And then I'm gonna close the box. To close your box up, you're gonna fold in your two ends that are not cut and then you're going to overlap the cut ends and you are going to slide the cuts into each other. And you might just need to firm that up. So our cute little box, even just without any kind of decoration, but we're gonna decorate it some more. Okay, so we are going to turn our box upside down. I'm not too worried about this little bit of glue here because we are going to fancy that up too. So the next step is we want to do our new year. And on this set, so this is from Timeless Tidings, which is also in the 2018 holiday catalog, there's a and a happy new year. Well, I don't want the and a happy because I already have my happy. So I'm going to use my Stampin' Write black, basic black marker, and I am just going to ink up the new year part. And so I'm just going to be very careful as I'm going that I'm not going anywhere on close to that and a happy. Close that up and I'm just going to stamp that onto my cardstock and this is just a small piece of Whisper White, just a scrap really. And now I'm going to cut out my new year using the uh, label that was in the Merry Christmas to All. Now I'm just going to glue that new year onto the box. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue down on this end and I'm going to have that poke out the side of the box. Oops. And you might need to just hold that in place for a minute until it sets up. I like the liquid glue over a snail. I could have used tear and tape too, I suppose, and it would have held it in place. There's not gonna be a lot of moving back and forth on that Happy New Year. So we're gonna pull in our silicone craft sheet and we are going to give ourselves a little bit of glue, liquid glue on the side. And then we are going to pick it up with a sponge that I hold together with an alligator clip 
and I'm going to first sponge my Silver Happy. And this just gets a little bit of glue everywhere. And I often uh, use this, but I often will also just dot on little dots of glue, which works okay for me. Uh, but this is a quick way to put your Happy together. So I'm just going to put that right over top and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a shadow. And the shadow is just going to help it so that we can see it really well against that gold. I didn't choose to do gold writing because I thought that would be too much too similar. There we go, so we'll just glue that all down. Okay, so we have our happy. And I'm going to do the same thing to the back of this one. Probably need a little bit more glue before I put that on. Now I am going to position this so that it's like this. So I really only need to get no, I don't need to put any on the back of the Y or on the um, sort of the fancy part of the H. So I'm just going to put that on the middle again, just a little bit. And place that right over top. There we go. So there's our fancy part. And then I'm going to decorate the top. I'm going to give myself a, uh, a clear faceted gem, a gold faceted gem, actually. So just a gold faceted gem. I'm going to use a big guy right here to go with the gold of the paper. And then I'm actually going to decorate the top as well. So I'm going to use glue dots this time. And I've got three pieces of my organdy glitter ribbon. And I have the pieces at uh, three inches three and a half and four inches. And we are just going to turn these into little circles. So I'm gonna take the end of one, put it on top of the glue dot, put this on top of the glue dot, move this over, put the last one on top of the glue dot. Then I'm gonna pull those off and I'm just going to turn them into a little circle right over top of the other one. And there should be enough in there. Actually, that's my smallest one. So I'm gonna leave him to last. And this is my biggest one. I'm gonna put him on first. And I'm just going to place it right over top. And there should be enough stick left in that glue dot that it'll stick down. If you're at all worried about it, you can put another one on. So I'm just going to fold that right over top of itself again so you can see it. And then I'm, go I'm actually going to put a, another glue dot on this one because it's sitting on top of the ribbon. So you're going to put this one inside the other one and glue it down. And then this last one is the same thing. You're going to put a little bit of glue dot on here. And I think maybe put another glue dot on that very first one when you first do it. But this is just going to sit inside. And so you've made a little bow that has um, quite a lot of personality to it so this is the hardest part is getting this one in here so i could have made this on my um, silicone mat too my craft sheet but i'm just going to place that in there and he's not wanting to cooperate so okay we're going to do it this way so it's already crossed so i want that to cross a little bit more this way so it's not going to be standing up exactly like the one beside it and now i am going to put that other glue dot on the big piece Okay, and then you can just place that right over top. Okay, so what you've got is a little fancy bow on top and you've got a really sparkly happy new year that you could have at table centers or you could have uh, anywhere else on your um, in your decorating scheme. And always gold and silver and black works really well. I'm gonna pull in a little Christmas one that I made as well. So this is a Christmas one, a little bit smaller uh, on the top. And I use the polka dot uh, embossing folder on this one and then put just half inch glitter circles, silver on top. And this is um, from the Making Christmas Bright set. So I've just uh, stamped that in memento and cut around it and then put it on with dimension. So there you have two projects, one for a super happy new year and one for a really fun Christmas as well. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you do, please like it below and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you live in Canada and don't yet have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your gal. Check out my website at www.designwithjoe.ca. I post regularly and I would love to have you join in. 
All of the supplies I use for today's project you can find in the description. Thanks very much and have a great paper crafting day.